Hi, I'm Adi Baird from BPX. Welcome to Meet the Product. Welcome to the BPX series of short videos where we're sitting down with our manufacturing partners to discuss their latest innovative products. Today I'm joined by Mark Lloyd from Phoenix Contact to talk about their surge protection range. Morning Mark. Morning. Please explain a little bit about surge protection and its functionality. Challenging. In, in, in a word, they protect the loads they're connected to in front of uh, by diverting a current away to earth so that the load only sees the nominal current, if that makes sense. So if you have a, an electrical um, switching event, that could generate up to 2,000 amps in a, in a panel. That SPD will divert most of the 2,000 amps to earth. All the load will see is whatever the nominal load is. Okay. So it doesn't shut the, shut the application down. Okay. So in, in an essence, it, it's sitting in the background protecting. You don't even know it's doing it sometimes. What types of application are we seeing the surge protection product actually used in? Well, it really is across the board. We've been involved in industrial applications for many years, but since the wiring regs have, have been updated, we're now starting to see commercial properties requiring surge protection and, and now domestic properties. And I think as a result of those regs being updated, we're now starting to see other applications like fire alarm systems and security systems requiring surge protection to be fitted. Mark, I'm glad you brought up the wire regs. Several years ago, I was actually exposed to the 18th edition and I noticed that then surge protection products were actually an advisory. Has that changed in any way since? It has to some extent. There's a lot less ambiguity now about uh, in installing surge protection. There's a lot less of a way of people getting out of it. Um, so yeah, if your property is um, multiple use, more pe lots of people there, if there's a chance you've, you know, lose business or lose money as a result of a surge knocking out your system, then you're advised to put it in. And there is still a little bit of element of um, a risk analysis, but it's much less likely to be done uh, for the sake of just putting a simple surge protective device in, in a panel. Are there any future amendments due on the wiring regs for surge protection? Yeah, there's, um, there's amendment two, which comes out in May 2022 next year, uh, which makes it even less ambiguous. And it focuses purely on um, risk to loss of life or injury. Right. and risk to, um, to losing revenue as a result of a surge protection taking out your system. You've got three of the surge protection models in front of us. Can you explain the difference between the three of them, please? They're, they're all, they all do the same function. Okay. They're all type 2 SPDs, which means they should be installed in, in a, a sub-distribution panel, effectively, or a small machine. Um, going back to the, the black one in the middle, uh, this is our older, older product, um, but it's still valid, and it's, it's based upon the 17.5mm DIN standard, so you, it's the sort of thing that would fit into a domestic consumer unit. Um, and then our later product, which is our Vel SEC, um, what's different about this, obviously the size is, is much slimmer, but with some clever technology, this can be used in a, in a panel that's fused up to 315 amps okay. GG fuse, without the need for a backup fuse. So it basically makes it a lot cheaper to install in smaller panels, no backup fuse required, a lot less space needed uh, for, the, for them to install in. So yeah, and then I guess the, the next obvious leap for us, for Phoenix, is, is to go for a product that's uh, got push-in terminals. And we have this uh, in a Type 2 SPD, as well as a Type 1 SPD. And this is, this is fantastic because it allows people to, to, to loop in and out of each, each terminal. It saves a lot of space and a lot of wiring. It allows the, the cables to be shorter and overall that protects the loads are much better. You briefly mentioned that you've added the push-in terminals as an advantage to the new product range. Can you explain why that was, please? Uh, yes, no problem. The, um, the market feedback was that they want to be able to install them quicker and easier. One of the, as an example, one of the main problems with screw terminals um, is that you have to get the, the torque tightening exactly right. It's quite a, quite a high level of torque needed to, to there's some big cables, 35 mil squared cables in some instances. So ideal to use push-in you just literally push the, push the cable in and it's pre-tightened, pre-tensioned. There's no need to worry about having a torque setting on a, on a screwdriver, etc. Um, the fact that there's also two, two connections for each, each pole, if you like, makes it much easier to install um, in and out. Um, makes it we get away much shorter cables. Shorter cables means lower voltage that the end load will see. And uh, yeah, and even insofar as having the signal connections with push-in terminals, that, that's also feedback. But yes, it's, it's time to install and the problem with screw, screw terms. Sometimes screw terminals can be broken quite easily if you over tighten. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. So it seems that the surge protection products can be used in all types of applications. Can you please give us a real life example? Yeah, I can think of one ideal one that uh, makes my point that a lot of these instances happen uh, where 
a surge happens and then they afterwards fit a surge protector, yeah? yeah, after the horse has bolted. Yeah. So I can think of one application where um, we were called in, it was in London, it was a, uh, a visitor tourist attraction and they were finding that the PLCs were, were shutting down. And it turned out to be pretty much the same time every day. After a bit of uh, working out what it was, it turns out there was a generator being switched on. There were some roadworks across the road that was generating a transient surge, getting into the system and shutting down these PLCs. And we very simply fi uh, fixed it by supplying with a, with a Type 3 surge arrester that uh, solved the problem and not for a lot of cost. And uh, I've never heard from them again, so I'm sure it's working okay now. So it seems that what we've talked about mainly for surge protection is the power side of it. Are there other considerations? Yes, there are. And we operate this thing we call the, the protective circle principle, which we're, is an imaginary circle around a panel. We'll take a panel, for instance, or a building. And obviously power cables cross over, but anything else that crosses over that line is potential for surge. That could be RS485 twisted pair. That could be Cat5, Cat6, RJ45. That could be tele telecom cables. Anything that crosses over needs to be protected if you have a fully, to have a fully protected system. Fantastic, great, okay. thank you, thanks. A huge thanks to Mark for joining us today from Phoenix Contact to discuss the surge protection products. If you'd like to find any more information out, then please click on the link, but thanks for joining us today.